I can help to undo that for someone else so that they can have a better life and achieve what they want to achieve. I feel like that is my like main goal. Yeah. Obviously I also still want to make a coin. Like I'm going to make that very fucking clear, but I want to also uplift other people. You can do both. You can Hi, I'm John Ali, and today we are on track with Chester Lockhart. Hi, Venmo me. <laughs> How are you, babe? I am just fucking dandy. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I'm happy to be in LA and to finally meet you. you've been you've been to LA before. Yes, it's like my third time. And was it always this goddamn hot? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because I fully tried it wearing this whole wool ass suit over here thinking I was gonna look cute and shit. You I'm, look great. Oh, I've lost about eight pounds of water weight just since I walked in the door, so yes, thank yes. you. I'm glad it was worth it. No, it. but no, it's been amazing. And uh, I'm just, I mean, just coming back from New York, which is, which is world pride over there. Oh my God, how was it? Amazing, amazing, amazing. Do you remember it? <laughs> I was mostly just working the whole time. Yeah. I was just working the whole time, which is great because, I mean, there was just so many more people to like see and do things with. Literally everyone was there. Uh -huh. I was supposed to go, and then I decided to be an old lady and stay at home. You stayed here? Yeah, and it was amazing. Oh my no, God. No. But I like from Instagram was like yes. And now I mean, life. my concept of like pride. I was just saying this earlier is like June because I live in New mm -hmm. York and it's like that's where it is. Mm -hmm. But then I always have to remind myself like it's happening everywhere, everywhere. else for a while. Mm -hmm. Have you been doing lots of like pride events? Um, so I had to miss LA Pride because I was at Pittsburgh Pride um, with my good friend Rena yes. Sawayama and we were there um, performing. It was. A very different Pride experience than what I'm used to, but it was really cool. Tony Braxton was there. I was oh, on stage shit. with Tony, so that was cool. Oh, bring my <laughs> legend. Was, yeah, legend. Um, and uh, what else did I do? I just like I do a lot of nightlife stuff, so yes. I felt like all of May and June was just like I'm gay, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. now everyone now I'm straight. So <laughs> yeah, let's just swipe it all. Yeah, away. hun, swipe left, and she's gone. <laughs> no, but I mean. Pride is just like that. It's now it's got to that point where there's just so much to do all there the time, is, and yeah. these companies are like ready to like throw money at you, which I love. Yes, honestly, yeah. some people are very against it, and I'm like, bitch, isn't this isn't this what we've been waiting for? Was to get a gig? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. The gigs are endless. Yeah, yeah. endless. But you do. You feel but they end after <laughs> June. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. I went to CVS, and that rainbow Listerine bottle, she gone. So. I guess gay rights, gay love. Do better. Do better, do better. Listerine. Do better. Okay, I want to fight cavities and homophobia. <laughs> yes. So sponsor that. me. <laughs> Swipe up. <laughs> I hope they do find this new sponsor. Okay, hello. But uh, do you do you find it like now this point? I mean, in this in your career, do you want to do more things like that? Like just. Like hosting and like nightlife, like more, more like? I kind of got into nightlife by accident. Like yeah. last year I started um, producing like underground whatever parties and it just kind of became a thing. And then um, my one of my best friends, Soju, Soju yes. from Drag Race, uh, from one episode of Drag Race, um, and I started uh, doing Soul Train, which is the only uh, queer specific K-pop yes. party with yes. drag in America basically and it travels around. Um, and it was all just kind of by accident. She had done the event a couple times in Chicago, and then we were like, let's like so bring it to the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so now we do it in LA, San Francisco, and um, we do it in New York, Chicago, and it's like ever expanding, and it's a lot of work, but mm -hmm. and it's definitely not something I thought I was going to be doing. But now a lot of my work is hosting in nightclubs and stuff because you know your girl, <laughs> she's got on the microphone. Um, but it's just something that I never, I just never pictured myself. I'm not the kind of person that really goes out. Mm -hmm. Like I'm very like, I'm at home, I'm at peace. On a Friday, I'm like waving to my friends out the window, but I'm asleep. Mm -hmm. And so now to like be in clubs every weekend working until 3 a.m. with my earplugs in always, I, it's just, I, I love it though. I'm so happy and it's so cool because you get to see so many different sides of the queer community and I've got to meet so many cool people because especially in LA I thought nightlife was limited to West Hollywood yeah. or whatever and it's so much more than that and there's so many cool events and so many different kinds of events and people being showcased which I love and well, it's yeah. like you get to meet people and interact with them directly in a fun setting. No yeah and, and I mean I've been I think I went to the New York one once like I think that maybe one I want to say like the first one that you guys did. I was there. I don't know if you were there. I don't think I was there. Yeah, I was probably Soju alone. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Soju alone. Mm -hmm. 
But it, it was like, it was so cool to have something like that because I feel like now K-pop is very much like... Oh, she's having a moment. She's having yeah. a moment. Yeah. It's crazy. It's all these K-pop bands are crossing over and like, I mean, BTS is collabing with Charlie XCX and all these people, which yeah. is incredible. Um, and so it's... And like Blackpink, like fucking headlining, like, or doing like Coachella and like... <laughs> All these events touring. Like, did you watch them at Coachella? Like, did you see the yes. videos? I also went to the tour, like the when they came to like New York or like Jersey, wherever it was. I knew you had taste. <laughs> oh my god. Are you a Stan? Are you a boy? Yes, yes. I like fully just listen to them all the time, and I'm like pretending that I know how to do the dance moves all the time. I'll teach you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a lot of research. <laughs> I'll teach you. Yes, bitch. Yes, yes, honey. I know a little bit. I know a little. I bit. love it. But no, I fully love them, and um, I feel like you need to like dive into that world a little bit. Okay, I mean, well, I mean, it's hard. So the reason that we created the Soul Train party that Soju did and then brought me on is um, Korea is actually a very Christian country. Yeah. It's actually, I think, per capita, the most Christian country in the world, which is shocking to some people because it is an East Asian country. And um, because, like, in K-pop, you see boys wearing makeup yeah. and you see girls like kind of breaking gender norms like so like CL king mm -hmm. of gender norms like yeah. literally would have like mustaches and shit and and um, you Im immediately think by Western standards how gay how cool how open but in reality they're like totally straight yeah they're not allowed to date eat, uh, any heterosexually let alone be gay that's like not a thing and now there are a couple queer idols the most notably Holland who I just interviewed for paper magazine Amazing. Um, for the pride cover which is already so cool that he gets to be on the pride cover of paper magazine because like the representation that like there are no gay celebrities or gay yeah. people with voices literally at all in Korea even though it's like such a massive media hub the music and the TV are all exports there are no queer people really that are on a massive scale so yeah. for him to be like I'm a musician I'm gay from the get-go is like a huge deal he's literally the only one that's like from the get-go mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm a big homo so you know it's it's meaningful and um, so now that it's like crossing over into America there's so many like K-pop events there's K-Con which is this massive convention yes, that yeah. happens all over the world but especially in New York in and LA like in New York it's at Madison Square Garden and here it's at Staples Center and it's a four-day festival and I will be there this year in August, and um, I don't know when this is gonna go up. But if you're there right now, go. Uh, or nice to slip me nice a to twenty see you there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice to see you. Slip me a twenty. <laughs> um, but there's not, there's just not a lot of LGBT representation, and companies are very worried about doing that because sexuality at all is just not embraced. They're not yeah. allowed to date. They're not allowed to go out. They're not allowed to drink alcohol. They're not allowed to be up past a certain time. Like it's a very strict world. So we're trying to make this what is accessible now to everyone, which is such a cool thing, this like art and this culture, make it accessible and make it feel like you can be accepted no matter who you are. Because before it was very, like not only like with sexuality, but also with race. Like yeah. it's like, unfortunately a very ignorant, I don't want to, it's definitely racist, but I, it does come from a place of ignorance because Korean people are just, they just don't know and they emulate other cultures and don't realize sometimes. And it's about us educating and showing people the different kinds of K-pop fans and bringing it together and having fun. And also I'm trying to make a coin. So, you know. No, you're a big voice. Hello. Yeah. You're, you're, you're doing the work. Like, Thank you. And doing a lot of it. And like, I think the people that come to these parties, they see you and they're like, yeah, <laughs> it's like that's something maybe I could do. You yeah, know? that's amazing. We try to really like because our party travels to so many cities. We try to incorporate a lot of local talent. Like we try to um, a lot of times um, have like uh, mostly we have dance groups perform. So there are like a lot of mix of drag queens and like local people yeah. who are just passionate. They're not even professionals. They just come to perform. So it's like a showcase for all the local talent, which is our like biggest pride doing that because. I hate when we go to like when there's like party that travels and you go and it's just like these same people they've yeah, been yeah, everywhere every and it's not time, yeah. yeah so it's not so we like to give back to the community and like make it a thing that's localized to everything so we feel like we're lifting up the community and forming a place where people can get to know each other and continue even when we're not there yeah. you know so that's like our intention is to create something that feels good even when you're not in Oasis in San Francisco <laughs> the second Friday of every month. <laughs> like in bio, uh, <laughs> but no, but you you are South, you're South Korean, half South yes, Korean. Yes, yeah, half Korean, half Korean, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, what's like, what was like your family dynamic like early up? 
Um, well, so my mother's an immigrant, okay. and my dad is full Danish, um, and, well, I mean, <laughs> that's a hard question, bitch. My family dynamic now is amazing. Okay. Um, my father is very conservative and wears his MAGA hat every day, which is hilarious, um, and when growing up, we had a lot of turmoil. We did not get along. We did not see eye to eye. He is, uh, he's like 70 now. Actually, I don't know exactly how old he is, but he's like 70 right now. I know. I think he's lied about his age. Cause like, I'm, I'm like, didn't you already have this birthday? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Um, he's like 70. So there's just like a big generational gap cause I'm 13. And so yeah, it's yeah. just like that combined with his Christianity and the Republicanism, we butt heads a lot growing up. Um, that sounds about right. Yeah, I'm from a really conservative area. I'm from the Inland Empire in California, which no one knows what that is. It's like it's like Breaking Bad, but like okay, okay, worse almost. Okay. <laughs> so it was so it was like I didn't know any Asian people. I, being half Asian, felt that was the only culture that I knew. I look really white, so I just felt super out of place at home. I felt out of place at school. I was getting bullied and beat up and when I went home my parents were like you're fucking gay and I'm like I guess I don't know like <laughs> so growing up was just really tough but for me my outlet was like arts and theater and choir and singing and dancing and so eventually when I was on my own which was not of my own choice um that you know is what really pulled me out and like it it's uh but but now my we, there were years where we didn't speak even though they were really harsh on me Politically and religiously, they were always very supportive of me artistically, okay. which I even through thick and thin Like my dad would be screaming at me in the car But he would drive me to that damn voice lesson or oh, drive wow. me to dance practice oh, and I'd wow. be like, thanks dad <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, then cry yeah. myself to sleep, but so um, Which is it's a it's a weird it's a weird thing It's a weird uh, yeah it because like, so much of it was being gay and everyone I knew in theater was gay and all that stuff so, and my dad was totally fine with that my dad was like, my parents are like so open minded and loving but when it was me they were like you're dead um, but now we have an amazing relationship I'm so close with my mother who's like my rock now it's just like a complete 180 and um, I had a lot of like crazy life events I almost died and that's so, right you had a uh, like a heart attack when you were like oh she did her research yeah you had a heart attack when I read this and I was like, like, I can't believe this even happened. That's yeah. insane. I don't really talk about it that much because it's, it's, um, I don't look at it as a bad thing necessarily. Yeah, but because, I mean, it's scary. Oh, it was super scary. At 23, yeah. you know, it was stress related. And it, I didn't, I, it's called a stress induced myopathy, which is basically you don't go into cardiac arrest, but basically your heart just like beats out of rhythm for like intensely. And so it's basically a heart attack. Um, and because of that whole situation, I was like debilitated and I had to go like live with my parents for a minute because it, I couldn't, I had to recover. Yeah. And, um, but that whole experience, like I was working behind the scenes. I was, a lot of people don't know this, but I used, I like was exclusively behind the scenes. I've produced like over 300 videos. Yeah, I yeah, was, yeah. um, my best friend, Todd Hall. Yeah. I was his creative assistant, personal assistant, everything. I was producing his tours. I was doing everything. It was like all of us together and people didn't know that I was a performer really because I had like taken a step back and because of that incident that like forced me to be like okay life is really short yeah. it's really fragile mm -hmm. and if I die tomorrow which is now really real to me I don't I don't want to say that I didn't pursue the things that I wanted to so I started doing music and I started going back into acting and everything and since then you know I've been lucky enough to like experience like great things because of it but none of that stuff none of the personal fulfillment that I've gained from it would have happened unless I had had that incident I know that's insane it was like a very it was a big big wake-up call for you <sighs> and like and like a very and I couldn't dramatic. press snooze honey no it was the alarm went off bitch <laughs> yeah it was like Yes. No more, said, bitch. She said, no more, no more. Well, and I was, I didn't know how to say no to anyone. I was overworking myself. I, Asian, my mom was just like, if you work hard right. enough, yep. you can achieve anything. And I took that as, oh, bitch, you don't need to sleep. You don't need to eat. You need to drink eight Red Bulls a day and do all the work you can. And so until I was, unless I was miserable and not sleeping, I literally, so what happened was I was not sleeping like maybe more than two hours a night for like a month straight. Wow. Drinking like a box of Red Bulls every day to stay mm. awake. I was massively stressed and it was, it caught up with me. Yeah. Like, 
Energy drinks are poison for you, by the way. I had a Red Bull before I got here, <laughs> but, um... <laughs> but still living and thriving. Yeah, living and thriving. <laughs> She's here. It's all about moderation, folks. Okay? Not excess. But, um, no, but that's amazing. I mean, your story is truly is like, you've overcome so much in life. And I, I feel like that's why you are able to kind of be like this pioneer in a way to like make sure that that doesn't happen for people who, who are coming up and like the young queer youth. That's, yeah. that's what's really changed for me, I guess. You know, I feel like I have, I was, I've just, I've been having like this weird, like maybe it's Mercury retrograde, but I've just been talking with all my artist friends. Like, uh -huh. it's just weird. Like, what is our purpose? Like, yeah, anymore? Yeah. because it's like people get in the industry because they're like looking for, they're missing validation basically. And you either find it within yourself or you become successful and you kind of keep chasing it forever because you're looking at it from your success or you never find it and you give up and you move home. And now that, you know, because of my upbringing, because of a lot of things, I was very self-deprecating. I was like, a lot of my humor is like, I'm the butt of the joke. And people mm -hmm. are like, ha ha. And I'm like, but wait, I'm serious. I'm trash, bitch. So like a lot of undoing that, I'm now getting valid. You know what happened? My dad, now that my dad and I are cool, last December, my dad's a fucking genius. He's brilliant, but he's had, made a lot of mistakes in his life. He was wildly rich when I was young. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I was a teenager, we were like, poverty like it was yeah. like out of control so he sat he sat me down he's like you know chester he calls me chet you know chet the reason that i am not as successful as a lot of my friends is not because i'm not more intelligent or i didn't work hard enough for any other reasons the reason is because i did not truly believe that i deserved success wow. because people who make room in their lives and can accept good things those things come to them but until you change your whole paradigm and realize that you are deserving of good things, you will never truly achieve what you want. And I was like... <laughs> You're like, okay, poet. <laughs> okay, damn, didn't know I came here to be wounded. Can you call an ambulance? Like, damn. So, but that really changed my perspective. And so no, I've really been amazing. working on like, learning how to love myself and, and all those things. And so now that I'm like finding validation from within, I'm like, what is the point? What am I chasing? And so this past year has been really cool because like I got to travel the world on tour last year and stuff and I met all these kids from like random shitty places like in Japan who would come up to me and be like, I got kicked out of my house because I'm gay. And I, first of all, this kid in Japan was like, I learned English because of your song, which is like, I have like three songs with like four plays each on them. So that already, I was That's like, a lie. damn, <laughs> this, that was like, that hit me hard. And it was like, I just like seeing you just like be comfortable being who you are gives me hope that I can, you know, aspire to do whatever I want to do. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so like with that is like now my intention now with everything that I do is like, I hope to create a sense of community and to uplift other people because when I was a kid, I didn't have anyone yeah. who looked like me, acted like me, anything. And I thought, especially with the religious upbringing and everything, I'm going to hell. I'll never be successful. I'll never achieve what I want to do. And I'm going to get, and you know, the whole AIDS thing. My dad would literally be like, you're going to get AIDS and die. And I, and just like all of this rhetoric was in my head. And so if I can help to undo that for someone else so that they can have a better life and achieve what they want to achieve i feel like that is my like main goal yeah obviously i also still want to make a coin like i'm gonna make that very fucking clear but i want to also uplift other people you can do both you, you can, can make do money both. And, and do both you yeah. can do both and i feel like that's what people are missing these days yeah, yeah. they'll be like well why are you trying to make a coin i'm like well i'm trying to do good for me yeah too, i have mama. to serve i have to survive have to survive yeah <laughs> to do other good things. So, you know, uh, and that's not to say like all my intentions are like totally noble and I'm not selfish at all because she is, okay? She's an only child and she likes her things. But I think everyone them. should let themselves be selfish. Okay, hello. Everyone should let themselves Sometimes. be selfish. Sometimes. Yeah. Now, don't be a dick. Don't be a like, dick. But like... But putting yourself... But, but, but making yourself a priority yes. is different than what I was doing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I mean, I, it's so funny too, you talk about all this stuff that you've overcome and kind of like the way your relationship was with your dad mm -hmm. and all this stuff and maybe being the pit of the joke and I feel like you kind of do infuse that in like in everything that you do. She do, yeah. And like the music, yeah. the way you dance, yeah. and I'm like, I'm like, maybe I should turn it down. I celebrate it now. Like, yeah. I think it was, I mean, my humor, like, 
it all was a defense mechanism. I was super depressed as a kid. I did not fit in. And so I was like, I'm just gonna be like, I developed this like wildly dark sense of humor because I was like, I refuse to cry anymore basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and then people started liking me because they were like, oh, you're kind of funny. And even though you're a big fag. And I was like, yeah, I'm, yeah, double F's bitch, funny faggot. And uh, I'm sorry, I, I know faggot is a touchy word, but mm -hmm. I'm touching it. And I, <laughs> And so, yeah, I developed that, but then it was like it got a little too far, and then I noticed like when I wake up in the morning and I'm, I'm feeling like P. Diddy, and I'm like looking, sorry, Kesha. Uh, uh, I would like, when I talk to myself, I would like listen to other people talk to themselves, and I'm like, oh yeah, you look good, and I'd be like, bitch, you are such a fucking dumb ass piece of shit, and I would just be saying that, and that is like... Not healthy, that's not good, because you start to really view yourself as In being, that way. yeah, and she's not, yeah. you know? No, definitely not, definitely not. She's not perfect, but, <laughs> you know, she's trying. Yeah, no, I mean, that's all we could ever do in this life, is like... Do you try. feel, do you feel like you, with your upbringing, I mean, I don't really, I mean, I'm not I'm interviewing you, like, what, do you feel similarly, or do you have a different experience growing up? No, I mean, I feel like I definitely grew, I mean, I had, I'm very Latino. Mm -hmm family, very traditional, you know, like when I came out, it was not not accepted either. Mm. Like my mom wanted me to like stay quiet about it, like don't tell mm -hmm. anyone. And I mean, I, I took it to heart a lot because it was like, that was like my main parent at the time, like my, my dad passed when I was young, blah, blah, mm. blah. But I mean, I took it, as I got older, it was like more of like a thing that like, I just had to like be my own cheerleader. Mm. And I very much was always kind of just like that. I had, mm. like, had like, I had like built up in my head. I was like a loner, so I was like my own best friend all the mm. time. Yeah. Um, and I mean, my whole life now, like just leading up to everything that I've been doing, I've kind of just been, I've been a go-getter. Like I just like put myself out there and like if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If yeah. it works, then great, let's keep doing that. Yeah. And that's kind of like how would I, how I thought to everything that I'm doing. Well, she's so successful and famous. And she's so successful. And her eyelashes <laughs> are healthy. And like the light is like coming over here and I see like the shadow of your eyelashes and they're healthy, bitch. Thank you. Yes, length. Latino realness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but like, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's like owning things and like yeah. being okay with like the fucking bad and the good yeah. and all that and just cel celebrating it all. But do you feel like now your family dynamic is better? Oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. It's just, a, they just, I think it was like more like personal. Like, yes. Like, was like, this is my yes. fault. And yes. I'm like, I'm just a homo, relax. Yeah, relax, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I've been the same bitch this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> my parents were sh tried to be shocked when I came out, when I was like 13. They, there are videos of me at two years old I would wrap a towel around my head and take off all my clothes and go in the kitchen and I would use chopsticks as drumsticks and play the drums and I would sing. I knew every word at like two or three to I want to dance with somebody. Uh. And there's so many videos of this and my parents, when I was like, I'm gay, my parents were that meme of Pikachu where he's like, <laughs> like bitch, duh. Yeah, how did you not know? I literally wanted to be, let me show you a picture. Yeah, please show me. I literally me. wanted to, like every year for Halloween, I would like force my mother to make me these elaborate Halloween costumes and I would pick the fabric, I would do my own photo shoots and poses and my, like. Oh my God. I don't so know if you can cute. see that. But um, that is not a straight person. I don't know how to tell you. <laughs> Sorry. You look gorgeous. Thank you. No, the, the... Did you do the beat yourself? Oh, the beat was me. Yeah. I had a very strict vision. Like, I took my mom to the fabric store and I was like, Mom, <clears throat> we're going to do this and this and this. And she's like, we can't afford that. And I was like, well, Can you, you do might a nod to this someday? I feel like it needs I to mean, happen. I mean, she might. I mean, she might. I feel like you should. I mean, the, the crushed velvet was a look and I picked that out. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We didn't have that much money for the crushed velvet, but I was like, Mom, you might need to work an extra hour or two because... <laughs> I feel like we need like a like a... Like a 2020 or 2019 version of this photo. To this exist. pose, like, why would I? Do you were this? on it. You were on it. You were on it. You were ahead of ahead of its time, like Bionic. Um. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. We're not even going to bring Christina into this girl. Oh, no, no, no. That's There's... haunted. In loving memory. Uh, about swipe up by it on iTunes. Love it. Hey, listen. Yeah. iTunes is going away, but still buy it on iTunes. I, my first introduction to you, uh, to you was like Todrick, and I yeah. think it was the Mean Girls. Uh, oh, party. God. That's how yeah. I first saw your face. Yeah. I was like, hmm. <laughs> uh, but like, I've, I feel like I've seen you like through the years, you know, gradually, mm -hmm. gradually, like be you just become more and more of like this wonderful being. And, um, when I when you released In Loving Memory, I was like, oh. <laughs> I feel like this fully, that this song fully encompassed like who you were basically. Like it was like, 
that's like something that's always interesting to me. When you want to make a song, mm -hmm. you want to per pursue a music career, mm -hmm. how do you like nail the sound and make sure it's like... I guess, well, so I... I so the re when I came into music, like, I had like hundreds of songs on that I had made, like demos, shitty demos of on my computer, but I just never told anyone. So finally I was public about it and I just like had all these references, like I was super inspired growing up by movie musicals and mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. cinematic mm -hmm. stuff. Like I've, I'm actually like a crazy old movie buff. Like I've seen like literally every movie from like 1940 to 1955. Not every movie, but like most yeah, of the yeah. major ones. And she's um, cultured. She's cultured. <laughs> <laughs> like a probiotic. And <laughs> she, um, and so I was super inspired by that. My dad was really into like old horror movies. That's what got me into like the like dark stuff because he like loved The Exorcist and he loved all this shit. He loved David Bowie and Pink Floyd. And so all those things kind of came into me and I, and I was having trouble because I wanted people to like produce my music and I had no idea how to do that. Do it, I didn't yeah. know anyone. I didn't know how to write really. I didn't know anything. And so I was like, okay, well no one is doing this for me. So I'm gonna learn how to do it myself. So, so yeah. I started I bought recording equipment and I bought all this stuff and I would watch endless YouTube videos on how to like produce and I like had basic knowledge of like piano and stuff so it like came into play and I just did it mm -hmm. and um, I just because of my background in production I knew how to cast things and I knew how to film things and I knew how to choreograph and do all these things so I and I was a dancer a professional dancer I've done a lot of shit bitch and um, but I don't dance now I make money moves <laughs> no I don't and uh, <laughs> Um, and so I just did it. Yeah. yeah. And so, and that's everything I do. Everything that's like of me online, I do other graphic design. I, a lot of my videos, I'm, I've literally lit it myself. I've done the editing. I've done everything. I've rented the camera. The insurance is in my name. I choreographed it. I cast it. I picked the fucking crafty. I did, I rented the set. I produced and, and recorded the song. Yeah. Like, no, and that's honestly, that's been like a, almost like a common thread where, and that's a lot of the reason why I wanted to do this because a lot of the time people don't realize they see the song or they see the video and they're like, oh, this person has like all this money and, and there's all these teams behind them and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, these people are doing it by themselves. Yeah. It's a, like a one person machine You're trying to make yeah. it happen. Exactly. Yeah. Because I think it's just the music industry has just, and just like all of entertainment has changed so much now that, you know, we have social media. Yes you really are like, there's no reason for you not to just do it on your own. And it's scary because it's like, you know, there's no school for this shit. Like nope. no one teaches you how, so you just have to fucking try do and it. do it and learn as you go and yeah. all of that. And that's why I've loved finding all these cool queer artists in LA, like Dorian Electra and Jesse St. John and all these people. Like everyone is so independently minded and also so willing to help each other out, which that's is amazing. such a community feeling, which is like that's amazing. the best feeling in the world now to like all these people who we were, at one point like outcasts, now we've all come together and like we're using what made us different to like bring us together, which I think is okay. really cool. It's a superpower. Yeah, literally. It's like our power is combined. We are mm -hmm. Captain Faggot. And <laughs> um, so that's just been, it, it, that's just been really cool and I, and I feel super supported here. And I know you've interviewed like so many people that I know, like Vincent and all these people who are yeah, so amazing. incredible. And all you guys know each other and, it's, and that's yes. what I love about it. Yeah. I love about it. It's like, it literally is a community and you guys are all uplifting each other and supporting each other yeah. and it's it's so great and that's I feel like everyone else should take by example yeah because the straights are not doing this honey okay yeah. the straights wouldn't know all right how to form an army yeah. okay yeah like, except for the actual army um <laughs> But, I mean, it's been a minute since you've had some music out. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have future plans for, for music and stuff? I do. I'm actively working on a bunch of stuff right now. Good. It's just been, like, a back and forth. I'm figuring out what I'm doing necessarily with, like, release schedule. I was kind of on hold earlier this year for a TV project, and now I am... I hear about it. <laughs> well, bitch, I'll, I, you probably you can look it up online, bitch. But the shit got Just canceled. Simple, simple Google. She got canceled, mama. So two weeks ago. So that's been <sighs> weird. But like that was cool. Did, did you interview Miss Benny? Yes, 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 Oh my god. Mama. Mama. Bitch, you're on speakerphone. First of all, I'm here with John Ollie. Hi, baby. 
Hi, love. You didn't want, you, you, you're too busy and booked. You'd be out here shooting your cover art and you'd be doing other shit. You'd be doing interviews and you don't tell me. We're neighbors and I don't see this bitch. Oh my God. You're right. <laughs> oh wait, I was also talking about you earlier today. Can you believe? Oh my God, you're giving me press? What did you say? Please stream Every Boy by Miss Benny and pay my fucking rent. Her rent is cute too. I live next to her. I was like, damn, girl, you got all this? Fresh, fresh, fresh new apartment. <laughs> Hello. Hey, listen, my car got broken into last night in my apartment building. So um, I need you to buy me a McDonald's. Bye. I will. Text me. <laughs> I hate her. Anyway, Miss Betty and I were in a pilot together that was for CW early this year. It was really cool. It was about um, the makeup industry. Benny was a lead. I was a supporting character. We were both like very like non-binary, whatever. Didn't work out, um, which, you know, that just happens with pilots it sometimes. They don't, get, yeah. they don't get picked up. Um, I'm not saying anything about homophobia, but, you know, it's just, it's it, it's the first, it would have been the first show with gender non-conforming leads who are, like, out and proud, like, non-binary, like, whatever. Yeah. And, but that's, like, crazy to me. Like, I, I realized, like, wow, it's there's no characters like this on television currently. So it was a really cool project to be a part of, and it was cool because Benny's one of my, my closest friends now. And, yeah. and um it was amazing to work on that with him, but we were on hold for that, and now we're not, so now we're back in the studio, mama. And, um, yeah, I'm doing a lot of stuff with a lot of different cool people. I don't want to name names, because you never know what's going to come out. And, um, but I'm really happy. It's all very, like, future vampire rave. Yes. Pop. Yes. So, like, much more, um, I want to say commercial, but it's actually not, but... <laughs> They're bops. They're bops. Commercial leaning. Commercial leaning. You could hear these at the club. You yeah, could hear these yeah. at the rave. You uh -huh, could hear these yeah. at your funeral. That's the vibe. And Chester will just have just dance, break, dance breaks on dance breaks on dance breaks on dance breaks. If you pay me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's like, one of my favorite things about you. Like, you, like, you know how to fucking dance. Uh, listen, bitch. I'm getting old, though. I My joints, this cartilage, she don't exist anymore. I was a, so I was a dancer for a long time, a professional dancer, and I gave that up because my knees gave out, baby. But And then here I am now, dancing so much. But uh, you're going to see a lot more dancing. Yes, we want to see more music. We want to see more dancing. We want to yes. see more hosting. We want to see more parties. Honey, mama. The pilots will come. There will be others. Oh, no, no, no. You don't even know about the shit that's coming up, bitch. The bookings are here, but we're not talking about them yet. Because we're in retrograde and I want I don't want to speak anything yeah, about yeah, anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not do that. Yeah. Let's do that. But I want to thank you so much for sitting down and talking to Oh my god, me. thank you for having me. I want to interview you. I feel like I talk too much. Oh my god, no, you're fine. I loved it. Go on. Please interview me. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, don't do that. Don't ask me questions. No, 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 no. But but this has been the amazing, the impactful, the endlessly talented Chester. I'm Celine Dion. Thank you for having me. Um, you can donate directly to my GoFundMe or to my Venmo um, just by going to at Chester Lockhart. That's my Venmo. Go do it. Bye. He writes. <laughs> <laughs>